All right, back again. Um, today I found three computers at the dump today that uh, were just sitting there in a pile. Basically, they were not, they're not completely trashed, but um, some of them are in pretty rough shape. So I'll start with the one that's in probably one of the better, it's in the best condition. Um, this is an Optiplex GX150, a Dell, that I've picked out of the trash. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a small form factor case. It's missing its CD drive bezel and it's got sticker residue here. It also looks like it may have been a part, may have been covered by an extended service agreement, as this sticker here would suggest. Go ahead and flip it around. Here's the back. Doesn't have any expansion cards, but it's got two expansion bays. And it even has an AGP slot, so I could put a decent video card in there. You see it's got printer parallel, dual serial, PS2, two USB 1.1 ports, Ethernet, VGA out, and your line in, audio out, and microphone in. And then you have two expansion bays there for small form factor uh, PCI and AGP cards. Uh, let's see, on this side I have the logo stickers. Pentium 3. It's a huge chip. I actually had to reseat the CPU in this. And it's a huge chip. And designed for Windows 2000 Professional, NT for Workstation 4.0, or Windows 98. And by the COA here, it has it originally had Win2K on it. And if you want that product key, just pause the video. It's for Windows 2000 with Service Pack 1, I believe. <clears throat> but I could be wrong. It still has Windows 2000 on its hard drive, but the installation is corrupt. It boots to a BSOD and says that the and with a boot device inaccessible error. So I tried to reformat the hard drive and install Windows Millennium. But I get a keyboard failure error when I try using the PS2 port, and when using a USB keyboard, I can enter the BIOS with a USB keyboard, but I am unable to make a selection on the boot from hard disk or CD menu. And I've tried rese resetting the CMOS on this, reseating the CMOS battery, clearing the CMOS settings, and loading the defaults, and uh, draining the capacitors, but none of that worked. So I've come to the conclusion that this motherboard is on its way out. So now I'm just going to go ahead and open the case. I'll set the camera down on my Optiplex, on the next one of these other Optiplex machines. We'll open up the case so you can get a look inside. So here's what it looks like open. Up here you have your drives. It's got a Western Digital Caviar hard drive. 10 gigabytes. I don't know if you can read the label from there, but it says 10 gigabytes manufactured in September 2001 on the 6th, so pretty close to 9-11. And then up there's the CD-ROM drive and floppy drive. You can't really see the floppy drive, but it's there. Then we got our motherboard down here. There's the IDE, <coughs> IDE connectors floppy connectors and front panel connectors slimline power supply we have an extended PCI slot and I've actually not seen one of these in a long time a regular PCI slot and an AGP slot so if you want to add a decent video card for gaming you can here's the RAM bays it's got two RAM slots it currently has a 256 megabyte module installed um, it can have a maximum of 512 megabytes of RAM, and I will be maxing that out in another video. I also put a new CMOS battery in because the one that was in here was not was no good, so I replaced it with a with a known good CMOS battery, which I'll transfer to the new motherboard when it comes in. And then there's your heat sink and fan over the giant Pentium 3 chip. So this computer is going to be getting a new motherboard, a uh, decent video card, at least one from back in the day, and um, we'll probably have another 256 megabyte module installed to make 512 megabytes. And I would, I might consider putting Windows XP on this thing, 
But if it does, if it if XP doesn't run too well, then and I'm just constantly here seeing disc thrashing, I'll probably downgrade it to 2K or Millennium. So that's trash picked computer number one. Go ahead and set the camera down again. Trash picked computer number two. This is a computer my deli, my uh, my Dell, my dad used to have when we first moved into our house. This is a Dimension 8200. I think my dad actually had the 8400, but this is the 8200. It's in, it's not in too bad of a condition, though the side panel keeps falling off because the clips are broken. You got a CD drive up there, floppy drive, Dell, and this piece actually lifts up. And underneath there, there's USB ports, two of them to be exact, and an audio in port for headphones. Pentium 4, designed for Windows XP. Go ahead and turn it around. You can see right there, I don't know if you can see that, but that side panel doesn't stay on because, um, because the clips are broken. The clips that hold it together are broken. So I tried using some Loctite, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be working. So I'm going to have to probably drill some holes and put that back in. So up here we have the power supply. <clears throat> Motherboard here. Got a serial port. Parallel. PS2. Two USB 1.1 ports. And this computer mimics 90's computers by having very few ports on the motherboard. So you need, that's why this computer has four expansion cards. Has an NVIDIA GeForce 2 video, car, video card, a Sound Blaster Live audio card, a modem card, and an Ethernet card. And it has one more expansion bay, which I will probably put a wireless card in. This one's probably going to be a keeper because um, Due to its high performance video card, I loaded XP Media Center Edition on here um, and put a new CMOS battery in. I would like to upgrade the RAM, but this computer unbelievably takes Rambus RAM. So, so here is the inside of the Dimension 8200. Take a quick look around. There's the Rambus RAM. You can see the heat spreaders on the back two modules. I'm not sure if those Dell modules are continuity modules. They look like them because they're a little bit shorter than the actual modules that are installed. And it currently has 256 megabytes of RAM installed. But I'm definitely going to put 512 megabytes in there because because um, I mean 256 megabytes is good enough to run XP Home Edition but for professional Microsoft recommends at least 512 megabytes. And the same for Media Center Edition, because Media Center Edition is basically professional on um, just with Media Center. Well, here we have the hard drive <clears throat> and floppy drive. I haven't figured out how big the hard drive is, but it does have room for expansion. There's another drive bay, so you could install a second hard drive. And Dell was nice enough to give us an extra 4-pin Molex and IDE connector for a secondary hard drive. Then we have our DVD drive, or CD drive, excuse me. This computer will soon have a DVD drive. I'm going to buy an IDE DVD, dri DVD writer to put in here. As you can see, it's got the IDE cable with the orange flag on it here for the second connection. And a spare 4-pin Molex connector here. And then here we have the expansion cards. We got the video card on the left, sound card in the middle, modem next to that, next to the sound card, and the um, Ethernet card next to that. And there's one more PCI slot, which is where I'm going to install the wireless card. And then the video card is using the AGP slot as well. Forgot to mention that. And under the shroud here, we have the Pentium 4 CPU and heat sink. Not really much to see there. And our good old power supply here. This machine actually did boot up, but it was loaded with when I first got it. It was loaded with malware, however, and it was, it had, it, I don't know what, I don't even know how Windows booted up, because literally a good majority of the system files that are required for Windows to run were in the recycle bin. So whoever the, and it was a fresh installation of XP Home Edition, and there goes the side panel. 
thanks to the previous owner for breaking the clips. <laughs> but yeah, this is probably going to be a keeper. Uh, as for the GX150, that'll probably go on eBay in the near future. And I will post a link if it does go on eBay. Now, remember when I had an Optiplex GX270 five years ago and I posted a video called Windows 7 Starter on Dell Optiplex GX270? Well, it looks like I got another one here. This one's in pretty bad shape, unfortunately. You can see this piece is, this uh, cover piece is falling out. This one actually has a floppy drive, unlike the, the one I had, which didn't have one. I did add a CD drive here uh, for my spare parts bucket, but it has a, D, a uh, regular CD. Oh, wait, never mind. This is a DVD drive. So, this machine now has dual drives. Now that I realize that this is a DVD drive, I'm probably going to take the DVD drive out of here and put it in that machine, and then, and then uh, maybe maybe uh, you just flip flop them around. This one's in, as I said, this one's in pretty rough shape. See, it's missing its service tag, Pentium 4, designed for Windows XP. It shares the same design as the Dimension. And flip it around. It is falling apart, as you can see. So this is going to need some major league work. As again, the clips that hold it, hold the side on, are broken. So and this side too. So that's two for the price of one. And the back panel molding, plastic molding, is coming out. So this will probably sell for parts because I really don't know if it's going to be worth fixing it. Um, it also suffers from the keyboard failure error, and I've determined that it's the motherboard's problem because I tried both a PS2 and USB keyboard. Again, tried clearing the CMOS and all and all that jazz, and uh, unfortunately, n none of that worked. So here's what the you've probably seen in the previous video what the back of a GX270 looks like. I'll go ahead and set the camera down so I can open it up. So you get a nice view of my bed while I open the case. And the one good thing about these Dell cases is they use the clamshell design. You don't have to take out any screws to open them. You just push the two buttons and the case lifts right up. Alright, so here's what we have in stock for this machine. Again, under the CPU shroud is just the heat sink for the Pentium 4. Nothing too special there. Um, there's the RAM. Got 250, I think it has 200, or no, it has 512 megabytes of RAM actually. But I would like to put a gigabyte as that is the maximum amount of RAM. It does have a dead CMOS battery, but I ran out of CMOS batteries. So I'm going to have to go out and buy a new one. A lot of dust up in that corner there. There's the hard drive. It's got space for another one. Floppy drive. I might put a media card reader in there so that at least that um, broken plate up front can be taken out. Then I've got the the CD drive on the left, or on the right, and the DVD drive on the left. I use the spare mounting brackets, two of them up there. And uh, for my upgrade, I'm probably gonna I'm gonna keep the DVD. I might just I might just keep the DVD drive and just buy one for this machine for the Dimension. And uh, I would like to put a decent video card in here and load XP Media Center Edition on here. Um, to make it a nice media center PC to sell um, and of course max out the RAM but I have to replace the motherboard so I mit so the RAM upgrade may not happen but yeah these are the three trash picked computers that I picked up yesterday they were just lying I, I just was driving home from school and I saw these just lying on the line on the side of the road in someone's front yard so I just picked them up and the guy came out, he's like, hey, you're taking my computers. And I'm, I said, yeah, I said, do you, do you want them, sir? And he said, no. So he gave them to me for, the absolute, for absolute zero pennies paid. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next video that I do.